two. Unit says career that. With a runner on second and then Benito Santiago. We've got more of the same for you. Johnson moves into sixth place on the all-time strikeout list, passing Don Sutton and the tall reptile appreciative. Let's go on to the fifth. Unit is clearing the mechanism. Shinjo swinging. Kirk Reeder. No chance. David Bell. Rung up. Sixth inning. Aurelia. Career average falling. Five straight strikeouts for Johnson. If he gets Jeff Kent, you're no Clark Kent. All right, we told you he owned Bonds, and Bonds is up. Looking for the first long ball off the long man. Looking at an 0-1 count. Looking at an 0-2. And now looking at, oh my. Bonds ends a stretch of 33 homerless at bats. That's number 593 career. First one off Johnson. One zip Giants. Bottom of the sixth, pitcher versus pitcher. Reader against Johnson, grounder up the middle. Aurelia gets the glove on it to first, and David Bell, get out of my way, says Unit. Fourth hit of the season, and Johnson wanted it. Take another look. He is an aggressive snake. Bottom of the seventh, two zip, two out. Giants, bases loaded for Craig Council against Aaron Fultz, and his third two-run single in as many games. Damian Miller and Tony Womack score. This game is tied at two. Top eight, still 2-2. Two, two. two on for J.T. Snow facing Mike Manti. Single to left. Reggie Sanders scores. This is an unearned run. Sanders reached on Womack's throwing error. Top nine, Mike Kopla facing Bonds. Base hit in the shallow right field. Not with the overplay. The shift in junior spive. He's got it all the way. And even the not quick to grin Bonds has to smile about that. And this, a 3-2 final. Giants now 18 and 4 this season when Bonds homers. They're undefeated when outscoring their opponents. Bonds refused to talk to reporters after the game. So much for that smile and say more endorsement deals attitude. Randy Johnson also churlish afterwards, not speaking about Bonds homer. Rob Nett pitched the last two innings for his 23rd save. Full count for D'Angelo Jimenez. And he's showing some power. It's three on the year for Jimenez. Puts out the home run. Padres take a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the first, Jake Peavy against Todd Zeal with two outs. Zeal rips that on an 0-2. Brett Butler is going to score. That's 999 career RBIs for Todd Zeal. Next man up is Todd Hollinsworth. We'll get back to that in a moment. Hollinsworth rips this one and bounces it off the wall. A bonk out there. Todd Helton will score. We got a 2-2 ball game. You could call those guys the Todd squad, throwing Todd Helton. Yes. And here you go. We'll pay it off. Driving in Larry Walker. Todd Zeal said, shows you really good or really old. Career <laughs> RBI, 1,000 for Todd Zeal. And then Bobby Estelea struck him out, threw him out. Gets Ron Gant, John Thompson with the strikeout. Davey Cruz is next. He strikes out. Top of the ninth, Jose Jimenez against Ron Gant. How about those mechanics? <laughs> Todd Zeal gets that. And the Rockies take this three to two. Todd Zeal three for four with two RBIs. John Thompson goes seven. Gives up just two runs. He wins for the first time in eight starts. San Diego has lost six in a row. In his previous nine starts, just 1.20. Top two, David Ortiz punches his lights out, though. A two-run shot. Two-nothing Minnesota. Ortiz after knee surgery, homers for the first time since April 17th. So much for the scoreless streak. Bottom three, Kyle Loge, Brett Boone. And now the bases are loaded. And of course, the unwritten rules of baseball say, well, why don't we just write them? Hit my guy, I hit yours, especially if you break up his 24 inning scoreless streak. So next inning, it's Ortiz. Remember, he homered last time up against Moyer, so. Moyer threw inside, missed him, kind of a Sean Estes deal, and then another time he hits him. But, you know, it's Jamie Moyer. It's not like it hurts. Bench is empty, but, you know, a lot of uh, grandstanding, no punches, no ejections. We go back to Friday night. Mike Cameron, foul tip. Uh-oh, call the union. Well, Saturday, Kyle Loge. They get a new camera in there, and Loge, warming up, breaks the new camera. Hey. But he would settle down, gets Ichiro swinging. Ichiro really struggling lately. Loge. 
Gave up only four hits in six innings. Walked five guys, struck out nine. Home plate on Brian Rungi discussing a possible scuffing of the baseball. Top five, still 2 nothing. Matt LaCroix scuffs it a little more. Two-run shot is fourth, and it's 4 nothing Minnesota. We said they wanted to buck the Jamie Moyer trend. Top seven, Torrey Hunter and Boise Hunt. Huh? His second homer in two nights in fourth in 14 games is 20th of the year. That leads the Twins. Bottom seven, M's down 5-2. They're loaded. Latroy Hawkins gets Mike Cameron. Let Mike Cameron go. And the Twins win 7-2. They have won two straight in Seattle after losing. Double Rays come into franchise record. Nine-game road losing streak. Bottom one. That's not good if you're a Rays fan. Tim Salmon off Jorge Sosa. We had an 11-25 ERA before that. Salmon's 14th of the year. Top of the fifth. Squeeze me. Brent Ampernathy. Chris Gomez scores on the perfect play. D-Rays trail 2-1. Top six. Still 2-1. Aubrey Huff up. And Huff trying to shop at the gap. But Darren Erstad says this register is closed. Laying out and realizing he did something special. Loses his cap. Makes the play. The Rally Monkeys. They're out in Anaheim. God, is that the next thing coming after the bobbleheads? Bottom eight. Tied at two. Erstad up. Two on and two will score. Off the single to right, 4-2. Angels lead 51 RBIs for Erstead. Top nine, 4-3. Troy Percival trying to save it. ABC always be closing. Angels win it 4-3. Percival makes it interesting, but he records his 21st save and 23 chances. 4-3, your final. Anaheim, 50 wins. First time they've had 50 wins before the All-Star break since 1989. Erstad and Salmon, two RBIs apiece. Tampa Bay <laughs> lost 10 straight road games. A's hosting the Royals. Top 10 now, tied to three. That's Mike Caruso, pinch running on first. And this is Michael Tucker to center. Terrence Long is at the wall, and it is gone for a home run. But Long kind of deeks there, and Caruso buys it. He thought the ball was caught, so he goes back toward first, and he passed Tucker on the base path. So Tucker is out. But he does get credit for a single, which does score Caruso. And the Royals lead 4 3, but, you know, Tucker ain't happy. He had a home run, and now he got nothing. Well, a single, anyway. Thursday, we flash back, bottom nine bases. Loaded, Royals lead 2-1. Scott Hatterberg threw all of Banez's legs, and the A's get two to come back and win 3-2. Lots of drama. That was Thursday. Friday, just as dramatic. Bottom nine again. Again, the Royals with a one-run lead. John Mabry left, and Eric Burns scores. Jermaine Dye scores. A's win 4-3 as Roberto Hernandez blows two straight saves for the Royals. Bottom 10, two outs. Royals up 4-3 again, and Brad Voiles gets David Justice to fly out to left center. First major league save for Voiles. He does what Hernandez couldn't the previous two nights, and the Royals win 4-3. Scott Mullen getting his first big league win. Mike Sweeney headed to the All-Star game, but Held out of KC's lineup for the third straight game after getting stitches in his ring finger after he was hit by a pitch on Wednesday, Sweeney's day today. Art House says Ted Lilly will be in the bullpen for Sunday's series finale. And Juan Gonzalez, check swing, the appeal. No! Out you go. Now this would be the start of a very rough night for Juan Gon. Well, you know, the first thing you don't do to an umpire is show him up. And you see some of these stances are kind of showing up the umpire. And so absolutely, the umpire has the right to make some calls that are borderline. Then you draw on the sand. That's an absolute immediate ejection. Then you throw the equipment. It's going to get you a couple more hundred dollars tacked on. He made the list. You're not allowed to be passive aggressive? <laughs> you don't like a guy's like body language? Myself. I like I love passion. Uh, here, Melvin Mora with the triple. Driving in two. Orioles take a 6-4 lead. Bottom of the ninth, Rick Bauer facing Michael Lamb. Two on in a 7-4 game. Gets a good piece of this. The crowd excited. Way back. Chris Singleton is there. Nice grab. And Lamb is out. It's been a three-run shot at the look of it. Three men later, two outs. Yorkis Perez facing Herbert Perry. Pinch hitting Frank Catalanato. And he struck him out. And the Orioles get it. That's a, so what? You're not allowed to lay the bat down. You're not allowed to put the bat on your shoulder. You're not allowed to show bad body language. Right. And you never right. show up the umpire. But you know what? On uh, ba the baseball show with Carl Rabs said doing radio, we talked to Jeff Conine. And here is Lance Berkman. Lance annihilates this. Oh, just kills it. So Kip Wells has been pitching pretty well. This uh, kid, not your knight, Jeff Bagwell. 
Back-to-back -back shots. Opposite field shot, 3-0 Astros. Next man up is Darrell Ward. At what point do you say, guys, you know, not your night? Maybe around, right around here? Well, the, the thing about this, Brian, is that if you're getting shellacked like this, you got to get some guys off the plate. Because if you're getting hit this hard, guys are moving towards the plate, you need to do something besides just throw it down the middle. Hey, Robert, it get worse here in the fifth. Well, you know, they, they intentionally pass the lefty to pitch to the righty. Then he walks Jeff Bagwell to get back to the lefty. Darrell Ward comes up, gets a great pitch to drive. Not only drives this, I think he flies it right out of the stadium and into the water. That's the first ball to land in the Allegheny River. Look at this guy. Uh, first one to get in the river on a fly. There's only one boat out there. It's not quite McCovey. Go oh, get in there. Get that ball. Maybe he'll put it on eBay. And six times, uh, six times a ball, by the way, has bounced off that uh, sidewalk and got into the river. But that's the first one to get there on a fly. Darrell Ward gets it done. Nelson Cruz gets it done as well. And the Astros beat up on the Pirates 10 to 2. Lance Berkman has the major league lead now with 29 homers. He ties Mickey Mantle for the most ever by a switch hitter at the All-Star break. Mickey Mantle had 29 in 1956 and 61. Astros are starting to play some good baseball, swinging the bats and getting some good pitching. They got great pitching. If that offense gets hot, don't count them out of the National League Central. Williams, top four. Brian Jordan. Solo shot is 13th, and L.A. down. 1-0 comes back to even the game at one. Bottom five. Williams batting now. Look at this cut. Oh. That was strike two. Two pitches later, he's not even going to try. In between innings, here's why. Has to leave with back spasms after that big swing. He had allowed just four hits in five innings. Dave Veers in, strikes out Jordan in the seventh. Veers K four in three hitless innings. Bottom eight, Eli Morero. Off Giovanni Carrera, a solo shot is eighth. Cardinals up 2 1. Carrera had allowed only one earned run in his previous 13 and 2 thirds. Top nine, is he trying to close? Eric Caros closed this. Double to the gap and right, it scores Paul LaDuca and the Dodgers. They come back again. We're tied at two this time. LaDuca motoring. <laughs> Top 11 out. Bases loaded for Jeff Rebele, as in no way. But Rebele goes to right. Miguel Cairo was put in as a defensive replacement. Oh. Dave Roberts comes in, Dodgers up 3-2, and yes, that is an error on Miguel Cairo. Bottom 11, Eric Gagne, Jim Edmonds. Ball game, L.A. wins 4-2, the save. Gagne's 32nd and 34 chances, while Jason Isringhausen has now blown three of his last six save opportunities. Top six, Matt Stairs oh, yeah. versus Jimmy Haynes to left. Adam Dunn, full extension, and he sticks the landing. Jimmy Haynes needing defensive support, allowing 10 hits and six and a third. Bottom six, bases loaded for Jason LaRue against Jamie Wright, and that is into left, and all three guys are going to come in. LaRue two for four, drove in for 6-1 Reds. Wright tagged for six runs on eight hits and six. Top nine, six four, Cincy. Richie Sexton facing Scott Sullivan into center. One and Carnacion laying out. Take another look at and Carnacion and the Reds win six four, pulling within one of the Cardinals for the NL Central lead. The Reds said Saturday do not expect Ken Griffey Jr. to be with the team when it goes to Houston for a four game series after the All Star break. For would make it look like a pretty good move in the sixth inning. It's a two one ball game. Ellis Burks rips this down the line off Mark Burley. And the fans are going to get that. Now, why do you let the fans in with a glove if when they touch the ball, you toss them out? Come on, Jeff. Can you answer that for me? Read the back of your ticket, lady. If the ball's in play, don't touch it. You know, the sailor didn't explain that to her when she came in. Well, he didn't explain it to her, and he didn't go with her when she got I, <laughs> The attendant comes in. You have to come with me. And he says, Look, I'm going to watch the rest of the game, all right? What? Chivalry is dead. See you later. Come on, Popeye. Go with her. Come on. You know, don't kick that fan out. Oh, now look out. Paul Canerco hitting the helmet from Jason Phil Phillips. You take it too seriously. Read his lips. You got to be kidding me. And Jeff Leifer is up, and Leifer is getting it done. He was two for three on Friday, Rob. Well, you know, he had 18 home runs last year. He sees his bad changeup the first time. He tries another bad changeup down the heart of the plate, and Jeff Leifer gets a three-run homer. Don't hang it, because we'll bang it. Dumb and dumber. <laughs> Mark Burley strikes out Ricky Gutierrez. Look at the bat going in. Oh, ugly fighter. Oh, they all wanted it so badly. You don't get kicked out for that, though. And now, 
Mark Burley is up to 12 and 6. He went 7, gave up two runs. Mark Burley, a lot of young left-handers can learn from watching this guy because he's young just like they are, but he knows how to pitch. A little on, a little off, move the ball in and out. 12 wins, that's outstanding because this ball club hasn't played that great, and he is a number one pitcher for this team. Burley, Mulder, Zito, three of the best young pitchers in baseball, all left-handers. Over there at first, what do you think? The run, I'll try to hold you as much as I can. And if you get careless out there, well, you're going to get picked off. Well, he just picks him off. He called it. Here's the replay, and Pedro, sometimes, you know, age isn't such a bad thing, is it? Remember, I'm getting old and wiser. Yeah, just ask Damien Easley. Bottom one, Doug Mirabelli. And there it goes. Three run shot, second homer in as many days for Mirabelli, who DH for the first time this season in this game. Five nothing Boston. But the question is, what kind of a dugout greeting does he get? First, it's Lou Merloni, Ben Affleck's arch enemy. And he gives Mirabelli the fist. That's what they do in Framingham, Mass. And Carlos Bayer, again, a new Red Sox tradition he started this year, gives him the awkward male hug. No fist. There it is. Feel the love. Top two umpire Mike Riley, no love for Pedro, who's feuded with Martinez for years. Now he says, yeah, you can't use that glove. You know, Pedro's had it with this guy. Now it's my glove. Before it was my jersey. Now, uh, next time might be my shoes or, or, you know, maybe the way I wear my hat, uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's, it's getting awfully silly the way they're, they're trying to act. To get his back and Pedro making the Tigers look awfully silly. Shane Halter, Wendell McGee, and Craig Paquette. He struck out six straight batters in one stretch. New glove at all. Pedro allowed one hit in five shutout innings. He struck out eight. Bottom four, Dirt Dog. Trot Nixon. Solo homer for Trot is 10th of the year. It's 6 0 Boston. And again, What's the deal with the greeting? Well, Lou Merloni, I wonder if Lou Merloni would give Ben Affleck the fist. Well, maybe in a variety of ways. Johnny Damon, he's got the fist, and here's Carlos Baerga. Does he go for fist? Of course not. It's Carlos Baerga's awkward male hug. 8-0 Red Sox win as Detroit manages only two hits. Just two. Pedro proves to 11-2. In his last five starts, he's got 47 strikeouts and four walks. Now he'll go back to the Dominican instead of to Milwaukee for the All-Star game to, quote, just be at my house and chill and play with my flowers. Facing Shannon Stewart, making him look awfully silly. Top two rings up Carlos Delgado. Pettit coming off a three-hit shutout of the Mets, but runs into trouble in the third. Dave Berg, RBI single left. They're going to wave Ken Huckabee. And it's 1-0 Blue Jays. Pettit really falling apart here. Next batter, Jose Cruz Jr. Down the left field line. Robin Ventura not quite there. Shannon Stewart comes in. They wave Berg in as well. It's 3-0 Toronto, eh? Vernon Wells' turn now. And that's to right. Cruz is going to score. And Wells wants two. He is hustling into second. Beats the throw. 4-0 Jays. And what's going on with Andy Pettit? Well, we break down with a K zone. The pitch to Berg. He leaves it up in the zone. Pettit, just his fifth start since coming off the DL. And then to Wells. Again, it's up in that K zone. Pettit allowed six runs on ten hits and only three and a third in the Blue Jays. Cruz 8-3. Oh, a little Paul O'Neill in the dugout. That's all right. Toronto snaps its six-game losing streak. First win of the year for Steve Harris. He was... Subtraction because of contraction isn't adding up in Cliff Floyd's world. The Marlins outfielder who's on the shopping block had the Expos on his list of six teams he could block a trade to, but eliminated them after last season. Floyd figured Montreal was about to be eliminated and wouldn't be any good this season. Well, he's wrong about the latter. Now he may be headed back reluctantly to the hard turf he called home for six seasons. And how many times do we talk about a guy and then you immediately see him in the highlights? Well, all the time. It's called editing. Bottom first, Floyd facing Sean Estes. Just two for 15 against the left-hander, but he doubles. Mike Lowell scores all the way from first. He had walked after Preston Wilson at Homer, so the Marlins are up to zip. Top third, Joe McEwing. On first after ending an 0 for 33 slump with a leadoff single, Ray Ordonez line it to right. Floyd making the grab, lovely there, and then doubles McEwing off first, so so much for the 
Super Joe celebration, bottom third. Floyd second at bat, Estes. He couldn't find Clemens' luggage, but he has no problem hitting Floyd. Bases loaded, next batter, Derek Lee. Just three for 15, career against Estes. Toss out the pass history. Lee with the base knock off Fonzie's glove. Wilson and Lowell score four zip. Top four Piazza facing Michael Tijera. Afterwards, called him a gutsy little guy. <laughs> Bottom of the ninth, pinch hitter Mo Vaughn, the tying run at the plate, and Armando Almanza says, Mo, have we met before? Later in the at-bat, Mo goes down swinging, Mets with 14 times last night, 10 times tonight, including Vance Wilson on the check swing. Mike Victor says, you're gone. DeHara gets the win on this, the eight-year anniversary of his defection to the United States same time but neither has a decision since June 16th Glavin in trouble early first inning Moises Alou ripping a two-out double Mark Bellhorn who led off under the Kim regime he'll score nice move skipper one zip Cubs next batter Roosevelt Brown not Corey Patterson another change there and he smashes a single off the glove of Vinny Castilla two more Cubby score and it's three nothing Bottom three, four zip Cubs, Carlos Zambrano drilling Chipper Jones, and Chipper's angry. Kim wants an explanation after the umpire warns both teams. It's not like you want to load the bases with a four-run lead. Andre Jones with K, argument moved. Top four, four zip Cubs. Alou had never homered off Tom Glavin in 56 career at-bats. He has now his seventh of the season. Top six, Glavin's gone, Alou's there, Leitenberg's in, and Alou's lighting up Kerry Leitenberg. A two-run homer, he went four for four on the night with two home runs and four RBIs, and the Cubs win it. Bruce Kemp gets the win. He's 1-0 and oh now. Game for the Expos. He's had a pretty good series on Thursday. Down and in. With this went down to the last strike after that hidden ball trick didn't quite work. Hit a two-run shot to win it for the Expos. On Friday, hit another home run off the Phillies. Expos would go on to win that ball game. On Saturday, first batter of the game, boof. Scouting report says, ah, just throw it right down the middle and see how far you can hit it. <laughs> Come on. It's up Brandon Duckworth. It's a one-nothing ball game. Top of the fourth, still one-nothing. Fernando Tatis, daddy's home. <laughs> Look at this. Hey, there's somebody out there, though. He's got it. Somebody tell Duckworth to mix in a slider. Well, that guy had him play perfectly. He did. <laughs> he had the scouting report. Here's Andres Galarraga. Second deck, first seat. Oh, whoa, bonked it. Only a second of the year, but it's 4-1 Expos. Bottom of the sixth, bases loaded, two outs. Bobby Abreu rips this, nice pace of it, but Vladimir Guerrero is there. Bottom of the eighth, 4-3 game, two on, one out. Pat Burrell, not quite what he wanted. Jimmy Cabrera and Vidro double play. Oh, Larry Boa thought Burrell may have beaten that out. Didn't win the argument. And the Expos take this one, 5-3 the final score. Brad Wilkerson, two for five with two runs. Javi Vasquez has allowed one run over five innings to get to 6-0 lifetime.